What do you do when you get to the end of your can of Stewie's Domination Serum? It's a 250 milliliter can, and when you're done, it should probably be recycled. It should probably take up less space. There's a good chance you should crush this can. Perhaps you apply the full Joel. Perhaps there's a better way. There is a better way. I'm just going to show you. I'm Joel. This is 3D Printing Nerd. Gonna show some stuff and print all the things and scoop it doop doop do. While browsing Twitter not that long ago, I saw that my mini factory had retweeted someone by the name of Michael Fanta. And Michael Fanta created something called the Can Press for this uh, SO My Mini Factory competition where it's hashtag fueling innovation. And the winners of, these con of this contest can win a BCN 3D Sigmax 3D printer, which is, well, it's just incredible. But I was intrigued because I like things that come in cans and I like crushing the cans when I'm done with these things. This Stewie's Domination, Domination? The Stewie's Domination Serum is, well, I've had this for years and it's, it's a 250 milliliter can, which is what the can press is built for. I'll go get it. No, I'll really go get it, Sean. It's over here. This, this is Matter Hacker's Build Series PETG. They sent it to me to use and to print some cool stuff with. I like the idea of PET and PETG because it has similar properties to ABS. And I thought, you know, if I'm gonna be crushing a can with something, I should probably make it with filament that can withstand the pressures that are applied to cans that need to be crushed. So I thought this PETG would be the perfect filament to try it out. At first, I did try printing it and it didn't turn out so well. I just took the Prusa default PET settings, which were overkill to say the least. Yeah, it just wasn't printing well at all. And I thought, I never thought I had bad filament. I just thought that other than printing a temp tower, which I should have done, I just had to experiment with the settings. So after watching Tom's video on PETG, I tried following his advice of choosing a PLA setting and then adjusting from there. But in the Prusa machine profiles for the Mark III, the PLA profiles had some moves that were a little bit too quick. So what I did is I went with the PET profiles, which had slower movements for certain operations, change temperatures of the nozzle and the bed. 245 on the nozzle, 60C on the bed. I think it was 45 millimeters print speed. I increased the retraction distance from 0.8 to 2.0 and I changed the retraction speed from 35 millimeters a second to 50 millimeters a second. Wow, that's a lot of information, but here's what was happening. This is a fantastic example. I was getting some layer shifts. I was getting torn up layers here. It just, it wasn't very happy. These were the initial things, these things right here, and they just didn't work right off the bat, which is totally fine. This was the one that I did some tweaking to, and you could see that it got really far but there were shifts in the layers. Here's one, two, three, four shifts. And so I just had to kill it and start over. It didn't catch on the Prusa, but my guess is the infill itself with that PET settings on the machine, those travel moves were too quick and I think it was leaving some of the filaments sticking up. Regardless, I do wanna speak about how this is fantastically strong. I mean, it's, I could drive my car over this, which I might still do. The failures were not everything. I eventually got myself a wonderful print. On the top, it does say press. There are some hairs, it's PETG. That's fine, I can hit those with a heat gun and I can't seem to find right now, but that's okay. After watching Tom's video, I, re I remember him saying something about PET and PETGs could cause damage to the PEI or bare glass when you print on it. I haven't had any problems with the Matter Hackers PETG. Once I flex the Prusa build plate, it pops right off. This is really the only PETG I've played with so far, but it's great. It's so good. Ah, it's strong. Oh my goodness, it's, it has a little bit of give to it. It's not st as stiff as PLA, which I think is awesome. The application process is pretty simple. Here is the inner part, here is the outer part. You place the can on the inside and you do what it says on the top. You press and it should crush the can. I originally thought this was for larger cans uh, like Coca-Cola cans and Sprite cans and Mountain Dew cans. I didn't read, <laughs> but this fits right here. It's got these little indentations here that fit around the can 
and then the can slides nicely into here. Let's see if it crushes. I haven't done this yet. I literally have not done this yet. <laughs> it's stuck on the inside. Come on, Let's see if it comes out. Oh, ho, ho. look at that. That's awesome. So we've reduced the height of the can considerably and we've compressed it down into a mighty small little package. So Stewie's Domination Serum, Red Bull, any of these um, 250 milliliter skinny little cans will work in this. And it was kind of fun and I'm really impressed with this PETG. I know you could probably do this with PLA, no problem, but uh, you couldn't drive over it with a car. Oh my God, that's what I need to do. I need to re-engineer this to take larger cans and then I need to see if it will withstand driving over in a car to crush the can. Well, that, can be, that could be fun. Let's do it again. <laughs> I think what I could do, I could dent the sides a little bit to kind of begin the process. I should step on it. That's what I should do. Let's see if this works. <laughs> All right, I stepped on it. A little bit taller, but that's okay. That's cool. That worked. Well, this is uh, Michael, a big thanks for making this model. I'm really happy that I was able to use it. I don't drink a lot of Red Bull these days, but when I do, I now know that I can crush these cans. I think that it would be supremely useful, especially for kids that want to recycle the cans. If it was slightly larger to take the common can size for soft drinks, I'll look into doing that. All right, well, the, the Matter Hackers Build Series PETG worked just great. It withstood me standing on it. If you would like to see me model this a little bit bigger or maybe talk to the designer to model it for some bigger cans, and if you'd like me uh, to, to test it out here on the channel and apply, the full Joel, we'll see what we can do. I think it'd be interesting to use this sort of method as a way to crush cans, like maybe get a big mallet and go wham or something. I would totally do that. All right, the Matter Hackers Build Series PETG performed incredibly well. It comes on a large spool. It's inexpensive for what it is. If you'd like to get your hands on some, there's a link down in the description. Full disclosure, that link and usage of that link does benefit the channel. Also, the Prusa i3 Mark III 3D printer is performing well in its review period here. I'm printing all sorts of things with it. If you don't want to wait and want to get yourself your own Prusa i3 Mark III, i3 Mark III, yeah, Prusa i3 Mark III. That's a lot of words. If you want to get your own Prusa i3 Mark III 3D printer, there is a link down in the description as well. Links to the Prusa website do benefit the channel. So thank you. Thanks for watching this episode. Subscribe if you're not, and be sure to ring that bell to be notified of when devices that make cans small are uploaded to the channel. If you like what we just did and you'd like to support the channel, consider buying me a coffee. There's links down in the description for that. If you like what we do here on the channel, consider supporting us on patreon.com. There are links in the description for that as well. Finally, if you find yourself shopping online, please visit the links in the description. They help ensure that I can keep putting food on the table. And finally, don't forget to hug each other more, because I love you guys. As always, high five. As always, high five. I was stupid. Oh my God. <laughs>